getting ready to rumble, bud. The plane is on its way. Those are our tiger fishing guides. It's been a long time coming. We've been trying to do this hunt for about three or four years now. Finally, they've arrived. I mean, my dad's huge for me. You know, he's, him and I, you know, have a really unique father-son relationship. We can go to each other for about, about anything. We've gone through a lot together. And uh, just the introduction to, you know, hunting at a fairly early age, deer hunting back home and just having leases and sharing all that quality time with him and just learning our, you know, our country. And then he came here on his first safari in 2004. And ever since then, he's, you know, He's got the bug, and so he brought me along in 08 for my first time, and we've been coming, I'd say every two, two to three years, try to anyway, schedule, if schedule works, but uh, yeah, I'm grateful for it, because you know, it's just, it's just, it's just a really cool feeling, you know, it's uh, to share that with him, and something like, like you just said, something I'd like to share with my kids someday. The people are great. Um, I've hunted a lot of other places in the, states and Alaska and Africa is the best and I just fell in love with Africa. Africa is just wild and it's beautiful. Um, the smells, the sounds from the birds. Um, the very first time I came here the lions were roar roaring outside my cabin. If that doesn't make the hair on the back of your neck stand up, nothing will. Colt Sauer, 375 H and H with a Swarovski ZA die scope, uh, swim by 8 by 24. Uh, nice gun. What are we after today, buddy? Uh, going after some cape. It's good times. Sitting in the shade. It's hot. What do you think? Do you think we're gonna find these guys? I hope so. That's bunny face. <laughs> <laughs> he knows better than I do. <laughs> no yeah. matter. Eh? Ah, I do not. <laughs> I don't know, but maybe the shed is an ultimate of us. Been a fun hike so far, so that's good. We got a little bit of shade, so starting to warm up, eh? Yeah, and these little trees are uh, at least not terrible to get through, so that's good. But what temperature is it now? Hot. Right now it's shady, <laughs> shady in a hundred degrees. <laughs> I have no idea. It's early morning still, huh? Yeah, it's eight. Uh, probably walked about 40, 50 miles uh, hiking through the bush. Um, had some tough luck. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of trying times. <laughs> uh, a lot of heat. Uh, a lot of just thick nasty stuff to get through, but...
Oh, uh, the herd smelled us and smell our, we got downwind from them and took off running. Good times. So first time with my double William Douglas and Sons 500 Nitro Express. Hopefully to get in some buffalo. I'm carrying a 416 Remington. It's on a Mauser action. It was custom made by a guy from California by the name of Larry Amron. Uh, I've been carrying this for about 25 years now. It has not failed me yet. The islands, I enjoy hunting on the islands because you never know what's around the next corner. There's always something going on. The wildlife on the rivers is, is incredible and the bird life. Um, yeah, there's obviously a, a, a great source of food for, for bird life and for wild game as well. And the floodplains are incredible. The elephants swim onto the islands, so do the buffalo. The hippos come out on the islands. Um, crocs obviously are, are sunbathing out on the islands. So yeah. It's uh, home to lots of different species of birds and, um, and wildlife. Yeah, it does get a bit exciting on the islands. Uh, that's probably why I enjoy it so much. Uh, birds, they often warn the buffalo a lot earlier than we would like to think. Um, we have a bird here that we call a kivik and uh, they have a specific call and when the buffalo hear that they know something going down and uh, yeah they become quite difficult to approach. found some we found two dugger boy tracks one is like a just a normal buffalo track the other is big so definitely a buffalo worth looking for looks like early 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 this hours of this morning now followed them a, about a mile in here there's a pocket of jess possibly they'll be lying in there we're gonna go and have a look See what we see. The mark has his double, so we want to try and get up it close and personal. And uh, he's got to have the right horns. Mark's taken some beautiful buffalo already, so we've got to find the right one. The tracks are quite difficult because this grass is very really matted. But we see what we see.
Oh, it's about 108. 108. So you see, it turned a bit now, but still not enough. Yeah, it's quartering up too tight and quarter yet. Yeah, well that big one with a big chest, that metal. Um, but you gotta wait till it turns. Because that's a very tricky shot. Go. Oh, okay. Oh, you fuck. No, he did a 180. No, oh, he's back. No, he's fucking ass is towards. Ass is at me, yeah. Aye. He's like quartering away. Yeah, okay, whisper down, not too loud. Shot. Oh, not without that female, not with that female sitting out there, especially. I don't really want to get that shot. There he is walking now. There, there's your shot. Shoot. Yeah, got him. Reload, reload. Good shot. Okay, just wait. Okay, we can go for it fast, but if he gets up, he's still, yeah, he's still moving. Yeah, it's okay, but if he get, come, let's go forward. You on safe? I'm not on safe. Put it on safe. Come, come, come. Turn it to four. Come, come. Okay, good shot, well done. Thank you. Excellent. I reckon that was a very good shot. It was almost like a flipping five hour buffalo and waiting for the impala to turn. But it was about 113 yards and he hit it absolutely perfectly, went straight down. So that's what we wanted, worth the wait. Patience sometimes works. And we got a free sauna. Well done, and a free sauna. <laughs> <laughs> Went for a hunt uh, for an impala for camp meat. Uh, make sure scouts have food. And, uh, got a real awesome uh, ruddy impala. <laughs> the old boy. Old boy. Scarred up. <laughs>
then happy days. If he's not, we keep looking. <laughs> Reverse. <laughs> We're going fast in reverse and <laughs> in gear. <laughs> so we spotted some hippo and we, we got out on this island to come and take a look at them, see if there was a bull there. And uh, we'd been watching the hippo for about 10 minutes and next thing the hippo spooked. What's happening? We're negotiating for a boat to come from camp and rescue us off this island. Our boat has come adrift and almost knocked the hippo over. The boat it can be seen downstream about 300 meters away. I was hoping our cameraman here would swim for it, but he's not, he's not, uh, he's not brave enough. <laughs> Our illustrious tracker here, Orbit, forgot to tie the boat up. <laughs> so we've been rescued. I think he was thinking of pussy when he tied the boat up. It was exciting, eventful. eventful. <laughs> got our boat back. In got our boat back, got the banana back. <laughs> I've never seen it done on television or heard of it done before. I've heard the babies, when they come out of, the, out of their eggs on television, but I didn't know it would attract the big males like it does. It's pretty incredible. We're going to sit in here and let him come to us. We can have a good look at exactly how big he is. Calling crocodiles is the mimicking of baby crocodiles. So when a baby crocodile hatches, he'll pop out of the egg and start his noise. How, 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 and that will signal to the other eggs it's time to hatch. It also calls the mother. So the mother will come across and start digging up the nest where it's buried in the sand. So the mother's there to protect and escort the babies to the water and dig them up. Whereas the males will come in looking for a chance to feed on their babies. They will come in aggressively and hunting them in this way Calling male crocodiles can be dangerous, so it, you got to be careful when hunting them in this way. Shoot him just behind the head, right in the middle. Ow, 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 ow. It's your call, Mark. Okay, if he comes close enough and you're happy, shoot it, otherwise just let it go. Don't mind that you let him go because we're 
were having a lot of fun. How awesome was that? Hey, that truck was about eight feet from you. <laughs> you say more? I mean, that's pretty fucking exciting. <laughs> I'm glad I passed, but I almost shot several times. <laughs> There's another one. There's another one. Oh, oh, oh. Days, boss. Great hunt. <laughs> Great morning. Yeah. Good job. Great that morning. Was awesome. That was awesome. I thought, should I shoot? But uh, it was so much fun. I do want to do, want to do it some more. So you cannot have much more fun than that. If that doesn't get your blood going, <laughs> nothing will. <laughs> I'm scared to go down here. No, ah, you don't, don't want to roll up in there. Don't be you do get up well. quick. Fuck. Let's get a machete. Oh, we can't go that way. Yeah, pencil, don't switch off the camera. You might get some great footage right now. How we lost our pH. <laughs> <laughs> Buggering around. You know, first part of this hunt, the days, I think, geez, correct me if I'm wrong, but 110, 112. It's hot. Hot, hot, hot. And it was, it was tough, though. I mean, never know what's around the next read, you know, jumping puddles, walking through streams. And so he puts his nose down and he just goes every day. He's uh, definitely the best pH I've had. He, uh, he pushed me, but I think that was part of it, you know, probably testing me, seeing what he had in me and, you know, what he could, what he could put me through. And so for that, I appreciate that. You know, I feel like, you know, I'm still pretty fit, you know, want to be pushed. And I do, you know, I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, Rob is, he did not, did not give up. He's uh, a great pH. It's a bit of a risky shot there for yeah. the double at that time as well. Yeah. Um, with a rifle, with a scope, with my maybe, yeah. but this time of the day, fun start wise. Africa, you know, for all the people that have come to Africa and got the so-called Africa bug, you know, they know what I'm talking about. But just, uh, I said to myself, we saw a beautiful sunset last night, a beautiful sunset, and there's one tonight with thunderclouds and mountains and stuff. and. I just don't know that there's a prettier sunset. I just think it's um, so peaceful, so serene, but yet so wild. And you've just always got to be ready for, you know, something, some new adventure. Uh, just offer so many, so many cool experiences here. We found this big crocodile here yesterday and uh, we had a lot of sports with him. He charged us quite a big boy so we've come back today we have brought the big guns today unfortunately we didn't have the double we were trying to shoot a crocodile with a double today wish us luck got some solids with you just in case these hippos come out as well Oh, oh. 
driving down the road and they cut some buffalo tracks so I think four bulls and so we're gonna give it a go and see what we come up with. We're gonna give them a go see if we can catch up with them. This morning we tracked uh, four or five dugger boys and unfortunately they took us on a bit of a, a route march. Um, we never caught up with them and we determined that um, they were heading down to the Zambezi which was probably another six miles ahead of us so we gave up on those. Put the two pipe down, got the 338 rum today. We were going to go out and look for buffalo this morning but I think um, word is that they're a little too far too far up the island and some stuff we don't want to get in so we're gonna leave them till this afternoon get in the boat and look for some croc and hippo i got my learner's license 1987 i got my full license in 1989. i've been hunting with a full professional license for 33 years i've had very good results from swift bullets i think they are top class bullets uh, they expand very well and they hold together very well, so I have no problem um, recommending clients bringing out swift bullets. Top draw. Lovely. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. Solid donor boy. Huh? He's solid. Yeah. That was probably the highlight of, for me because I just, it was the first time I got to bring, you know, my double. Um, trying it here, I was super excited about that. We and swapped rifles again and now we're going to go make another play on a buffalo. I think uh, Rob did a great job to just get me in a range or, you know, made several plays on buffalo. Uh, and that one just, that was adrenaline packed. When he's coming into range, then stand up. Because if he sees us from far, then it's... Okay, the trackers are down, probably 150 yards from us. They've seen the buffalo. He's holed up in a patch of reeds. And they're trying to push him out of there. And drive him towards us. We've got a bit of a Monterio going on here, hopefully. on the brew as well. Okay, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Come 
me. Just wait. <laughs> Perfect. Well done. Awesome, these are beautiful buffalo. Thank you. Well done, congratulations. Thank you very much. Plan worked, finally. Robin's saying, I think the storm's brewing, but now it's celebration tonight. can get up close and personal, um, had some great experiences on the islands, touch wood, I'm, nobody's been injured, I'm still around, so yeah, but it makes for really exciting hunting. Uh, quite often you can get shots within 10 yards on buffalo and crocs and hippo, so yeah, it makes for exciting hunting. Well folks, that was absolutely incredible, um, you saw it, it's uh, Ryan's first buffalo with his double, so we did it the real way. Nice and close, uh, lots of adrenaline. Congratulations, Ron. Thank Fantastic you. shooting. And it's been a good six days hunting these buffalo on the floodplain. Unfortunately, we have a massive stor storm brewing. It's actually raining already, so we're going to have to be quick about this. But well done, Ryan, and great guiding there, eh? Oh, congratulations, Ron. Thank Fantastic you. shooting. I think there is an element of just rawness and yeah, the danger part of it, the adventure part of it is unlike any place I've ever been. Fucking keep as long as you can. Not a charging buffalo. <laughs> Under the reeds. Second home for the last five days. I was so impressed on how primitive they are and how fierce they are. Uh, and they're very wise. Um, the, their sight is incredible. And their smell is, I didn't even know they had a, a, that great a sense of smell as they do. It's outstanding. you have an idea of what to set up around here or are you looking at any of this area? Yeah, I think, yeah. The wind will be good. Be going upstream. And the current will take any smell downstream. But I kind of liked our setup yesterday. It was pretty perfect. Yeah, it was. Yeah. In our island, mm -hmm. deep water. Yeah. We were... We were peachy right there. I agree. And also we've got more bait now, so it gives more time for more crocodiles to come, more smell to get out. Yeah. Even if we put a little bit out today, I mean, just a, a few snacks for them to get in water far downstream. I don't know. Yeah. Go out there and just chuck a few little, a little bucket full of guts. Yeah, just get the appetizer plate served. <laughs> Everybody loves an appetizer. 
it would enable it to get way, you know, much further downstream. I don't know, maybe too far then, but. You know, it'd be nice if we could hang that baboon about 20 feet off the ground, right over the water. Have them tail walking. <laughs> <laughs> we would hang him in the tree if we are blinded. Yeah. That smell will get off. It will. But I can smell it every I minute. can almost smell it from here. <laughs> Dude, that might be an idea, Sean. Leave that kudu in the tree. Out of reach. Yeah. Then they'll be fucking right there anyway. They'll be waiting for us. Overnight, cheese, there'll be thousands. <laughs> they'll be fucking angry. <laughs> Let's go do it. Where you gonna fit it? You know yet? Let's go back to our spot there. Okay. I like that spot. We hang it in a branch so it drips into the water. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. Overnight. That village is gonna be stinky tonight. No, well, there's anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Did you smell that guy? <laughs> we should just ask him to go sit there in the tree. <laughs> sleep in the tree tonight. Yes. <laughs> it makes ass smell like it's fucking candy. <laughs> right, let's go and do it before the sun goes down. Fuck you on turbo today, bro. Oh <laughs> boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> In that TV I'm here, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah. All right, let's do this. The sun is going. We must be fast. Double. One time. What's up, Bob? You baby. Bob. You baby. You baby. You baby. You baby. You baby. You baby. I don't know how politically correct this is, but... Bye-bye. <laughs> I like your planning. I like that. I mean, Look at that. The box. I mean, we may not be able to get up here tomorrow with all the cars <laughs> around it. <laughs> Come the back way. It'll be full of gators here tomorrow. Full up. What do you think, Pete? Good plan? I love it. Any plan is a good plan. I think we're on plan. We've done A, B, C, D, E. We must, must be on plan, plan M now. This is Mark's plan. <laughs> plan M. <laughs> so it'll fail. <laughs> Gonna have a boat race. Oh, we are racing the children. Andy, fast, fast, Andy! That's it, there is. Speed! Chop, chop! I'm for now going new. We're having a butt rush. Five bucks to the champions. Right. Ready. Steady. Go! Run, fella! Run, fella! Hey, hey! Chop, chop! Hey! Run, fella! Ra! Chop, chop! Chop, chop! Run, fella! It'll work. Run, 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 run! Run, 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 run! Run, 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 run! Run, Ah, I'm fine now, we're in now. Ah, I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to. Ah, I'm going to go to. Very good. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. <coughs> we'll have to give them each a cuck too. Yeah. That boat's a little higher than this one. Yeah, I like that one a bit more. <laughs> it's faster too. Yeah. Less weight. Oh. Five dollars, champion. Half, half, eh? In the second place. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we are in front of you. We are in We are in Yeah, people underestimate crocodiles. They are extremely intelligent. You know, they have been around for 80 million years and, and haven't evolved. So, yeah, they're a machine. Uh, they're streamlined. They're incredible hunters. They're very smart. Their eyesight is incredible. Their smell is great. And the hearing is not too shabby either. So, yeah, people think, well, it's like shooting a duck on a pond. It's, that's not the case at all. Okay, there's obviously two shots you can take. One is what they call the end of the smile, which will break the spine. So the, the mistake people often make is they judge that as the end of the smile. They see the end of the teeth and they think that's the end of the smile. You've got to follow this up. It goes up, 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 and then drops down, 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 down. And then you'll see here clearly there's around almost like a scale like that and that's your point of aim also generally with the jowls from his neck that is where the jowls are so which is like a wrinkle and you'll see that line brain shot generally go you go for the highest point we call this the, the ears or the horns the highest point of the horns come down about three inches and i generally go forward about an inch, inch and a half, just slightly in front. His brain is directly below you. That's his spinal column, that's where his brain is in there. If we're quartering on, I might say shoot him in the eye. Frontal is a dodgy shot. I've had quite a few rounds ricochet off the top of the skull. Quartering away is also risky. If you just, you just got to remember the brain is obviously directly between the ears, so you aim for the opposite eye and smoke it in there. And the, the difficult part is getting the, the height right, you know. I mean, I think Africa, you know, for all the people that have come to Africa and got the so-called Africa bug, you know, they know what I'm talking about. I just think it's um, so peaceful, so serene, but yet so wild, and you've just always got to be ready for, you know, something, some new adventure. When we're hunting for big crocodile, obviously we'll, we'll do the channels and the islands. We will try and spot one from the boat, and that's obviously a, a good sign that there's a big one in the area. At this time of year, it is more difficult than early in the season, and the reason being, once the females lay their eggs, the males seem to disappear. Looks like he's got a pretty long tail, but unfortunately we couldn't see his body. And he slid off through the reeds into a channel in the back. Calling crocodiles is the mimicking of baby crocodiles. So when a baby crocodile hatches, he'll pop out of the egg and start his noise. And that will signal to the other eggs it's time to hatch. It also calls the mother. So the mother's there to protect and escort the babies to the water. Whereas the males will come in looking for a chance to feed on their babies. They will come in aggressively and hunting them in this way, calling male crocodiles can be dangerous. So it, you gotta be careful when hunting them in this way. Well, we checked out our baboon bait and there was a smorgasbord of crocodiles there. But as we arrived, we got a phone call from uh, the Panyami River. And we've been here a couple of times, a lot of crocodiles in here. 
But the guys phoned us and they, the fishermen here told us there's a very big one. And these fishermen, they live amongst these crocs and generally when they see a big one, they're on the ball. So we're gonna try. So we've got the baboon and we've got, uh, what else? Some guts, hippo guts. Building a bit of a blind here. We need to make some shade, because otherwise pencil will stop crying. And we're gonna see what happens. There's a lot of crocodiles. There's a little, oh, six, seven hundred yards of water with no, no uh, exit and um, full of crocodiles. Hope we've got enough meat. But we'll see, it looks like a big guy. So it's like 12 feet from the baboon to the water. But I've got a feeling we're not gonna, there's gonna be no doubt here. Maybe his last supper for El Croco. Yeah, that's him coming out now. Yeah, that's him. Look, he's the biggest croc ever. Yeah. He's slightly cornered away, so come about that far behind this one. in the water compared to every crop there. They might come out again. Let's work our way over there. Get a good look. <laughs> Shoe gold. <laughs> What's here, my guard? Yeah, budget. Stop. Let's keep walking. Bye bye. Bichana, bichana, musamani. Yeah. Take your time, eh? You sure of your shot? He's in trouble. He's hurt pretty bad. Yeah.
I'm so thirsty now. Fate. Yeah, so got a buffalo. Put him on the ropes. I think he's he didn't stop because it's so open here. I think he's gonna stop in the tree line pretty quick. We just go slow, take it easy. Stopped here. We thought we heard something just up here. Mm. I'm selling a bottle of water. Luckily, I'm very wealthy. Thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last one. <sighs> yeah, you want some? <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> This is when you need, what's that stuff that you were telling me about, Mark? The hydration. Yeah. yeah. Hot and sweet, sweetie. I mean, my whole body is fucking tired. Mm. I'm dizzy sometimes when I bend over. I <laughs> don't need to record that. <laughs> <clears throat> You're also sweating pretty good there, Pencil. No, I'm always sweating. <laughs> <laughs> now all we need to round it off is those little Mapani flies. That's over, George. I'm gonna have a soup. I'm gonna have one. I need it. You know that? You know that? You know that? You know that? Maple. Maple. Does he keep batting down or stopping? I need that under that horrible thick stuff back there. He stopped there. And he obviously winded us and boogied. We started out with a crocodile hunt this morning and. Um, Really had a really good time. A lot of crocodiles. We found the big guy we wanted, but unfortunately never got presented with a shot because there were too many crocs. Um, they finished the bait and all started to move away. So we were coming out, ready to go and get to camp, get more bait and get back out there. And we saw this beautiful buffalo in a herd. Um, Mark made a hell of a shot probably about 120 yards and a little bit of tracking to follow him up and here he is. Great day boss. Great day in Africa. We were replenishing our bait. This stuff dried out so much yesterday our blind almost disappeared. So today we put a new one, round two with Mr. Crocodile. We are again phase two of this croc story. There's a big black croc in here and we're gonna hopefully get them attracted to the bait and send them packing. <laughs> Coming from the left, he's there behind those other ones. He's the one in the water, you can see his rough teeth. He's quite a bit bigger than the others. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, check how much bigger he is than the other ones. He's on the baboon now.
Just going back in. That's him. Oh, it's so hard. It's it's much harder than I thought. Okay, he's coming. Not that one, the one he's behind that one. That's him with grass on his head. See, he's got grass on his head. He's on the bank, he's got grass on his eye. He's got the baboon. Shaking it. Back in. Just going back in. Again. Damn. He was very crafty. He would come up and he always stayed on the far side away from us. I don't know if he knew we were there or not, but he came up in that part of the water. That's him with his head. With his head up. He's coming. They didn't come out, just on the edge of the water. Okay, he's moving up, he's up, he's coming up. There he comes. There he comes. Always on the other side. Always on the other side. On the baboon. He's, he's on the bait now. Back in. He came up and snatched a piece really quickly, did a 180, and went back in the water. And that happened six times. Okay, here he comes. That's him. Walking up, walking up, walking up, walking up, walking up. Yeah, he's at the back, the black one. He's there behind those other ones again. Okay, moving, moving, moving. You need those other ones to get out the way, man. And he just barely raised his head up just enough for me to give, get a shot. Um, I really felt like his only shot he was going to give me, so. Okay, there's one head in the way. He's always at the back. You can just see the top of his eye. Yeah. yeah. Reload behind the shoulder, behind the leg. Behind the My friend, <laughs> very nicely done. Wow. Put it there, buddy. Very good shooting. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Patience mate. is tough. Patience <laughs> is key. Patience is key. Wow. Into the smile. Is that where you drilled yeah. it? Yeah. He was clever. Yeah. Always behind the other ones. And not only that, but he'd come up and get a bite and gone. Yeah. And those others just lay up there. Yeah. He'd come grab a chunk and run. Yeah. He was a big dog there. I mean, when he walked in, Everyone just lay, and that last time he came up and that other croc just turned his head away from him like that. That's sub, being submissive. Yeah, they, he's the, he's the Mac Daddy there. Yeah, he, uh, he's big enough for me. I think it's a very underestimated trophy. It's, it's nice to, to get really a pretty nice one. So very blessed to do that. Again, I'd do it again. And that's not, I, I, I wouldn't say that about too many animals but I love dangerous game hunt, hunting. So folks, as you can see, this is an absolute monster of a crocodile. Um, such prehistoric animals and really difficult to judge. So Pete, tell us about how you chose this particular croc. Well, you know, uh, we looked at a lot of crocs, eh, Mark? Um, 
We had a lot of fun calling crocs. We, he's still alive. <laughs> I'm out here. Um, no, we had a lot of fun. Eh? Uh, we got charged a few times. Uh, we've looked at crocs all week long. A um, couple of the local fishermen called us in and they said, no boss, there's a big one here. Fantastic shooting again. Uh, you really, really shot so well this trip. <laughs> The least I can do. Beautiful. <laughs> you yeah. guys get him in place. <laughs> I could only see the top half of his head now. His smile was only about that far above the croc on this side of it. So that was really, I think, the only shot we were going we're to get. He always came on the back side of the bait. You load. Yeah, well done, sir. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. What well a good croc hunt. Well done. Good and thanks to all the guys. Yeah, exactly. Thanks very much. Guys. Yeah, I'm so good. Right. What do you do before? Hey! Woody, hey! Yeah, so it took about seven days. Uh, probably walked about 40, 50 miles uh, hiking through the bush, um, trying to get through. And I think we tracked one, two, three, four, five different buffaloes in those seven days uh, and just had some tough luck. Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of trying times, <laughs> uh, a lot of heat, uh, a lot of just thick, nasty stuff to get through, but uh, man, it was, it was pretty awesome. We finally got him. Uh, we got close. We, we had a good feeling uh, and, and it was not the shortest hunt, uh, but man, it was it was really satisfying uh, and really energizing. I felt uh, just this weird sensation, like uh, like this uh, weight had been lifted. It was just uh, you you get going and you go long enough that uh, you start wondering, like, is it going to happen? You know, because uh, some of this is it's beyond skill. It takes a little bit of luck, uh, and especially in this these second types of circumstances where it's so hot and it's this late in the season. So uh, yeah, it was just a huge relief. And I think that's part of the reason it was so rewarding. Uh, it just, you had to work for it. And it was, it was a good amount of work. Mark was fortunate enough to shoot his crocodile yesterday. Very nice crocodile. And we are using the carcass for bait. Uh, we're gonna put some pegs in the ground and tie the croc to him and then build a bit of a blind and get in the blind and wait and see what, what comes in. Just with the smell of this carcass this morning, we've already got a bunch of crocs uh, hovering around the boat. It should be a good day. Yeah, so we've got a blind set up here for this croc uh, that Rob was just talking about. Uh, probably, we're gonna hang the bait here, probably be within, within 15 yards, 10, 15 yards of the bait. So we're gonna get a close encounter today. spent a better part of this morning in the blind. Um, we did see some crocs but uh, nowhere near as many as yesterday and the big one that we spotted yesterday he had a particular mark on him and he didn't pitch today so he's obviously got a full belly and he's lying on the island somewhere here sunning himself. Um, so we've decided to call it a day in the blind and we are going to go and cruise amongst the island and see if we can find either him or another big crocodile or a lot of other crocodiles and we'll put a new bait there and see see what it brings us. Is it a dead elephant or a dead hippo or something? That's how they were covered in mud. Coming along, uh, coming along the river really slowly and uh, 
came around a corner and there was just a heap of crocs. And then we came a little closer and got downwind and caught the smell and we found a dead hippo that recently just died. So we're gonna set up a quick blind and I think get here tomorrow morning. Hopefully there are, there are a heap of crocodiles that came out. Yeesh. Just drifting down the river here and just looking at a beautiful sunset on our second to last evening of hunting. We are uh, cutting away the bait we had set up because we stumbled upon a, a natural dead hippo. So, and just crocodiles were just piling out. So we think all of them, or not all of them, but a lot of them from that area are over there. So we're gonna set up there in the morning, but we don't want them feeding on this bait here. So we're gonna haul this one back to camp and then hopefully get them all back over there. I don't think they're going far and then we'll soak up the sunset on the way home. Man, Rob's a go-getter. He's, uh, he puts his nose down and he just goes every day. He's uh, definitely the best pH I've had. This is a uh, large morning today. Um, we found a dead hippo on the islands yesterday that was surrounded by crocodiles. So we're heading back up there to see what we can find. Um, yeah, hopefully we should have some luck today. Yeah, like Rob said, it was, uh, we came across that hippo last night and uh, made a play on him uh, and unfortunately it didn't work out. What's funny is I never really lost hope. You know, I think, you know, a lot of people would kind of like, hey, this ain't gonna happen, just gonna have to look for the next time. But I just, I, I knew Rob was determined. I knew just being around him these last 14 days, that's the type of guy he has. He doesn't just have one plan, he has plan B and C, you know, if that doesn't work. And so, I never really lost faith uh, or lost hope in it. I, uh, I kind of expected it would probably come down to the last minute. It taught me a lot though, that, that hunt in particular, just being in those, those reeds where our blind was at. Man, it was uh, just kind of stand up waiting, waiting for the right shot for a couple hours. See his back straight away from us. Yeah, he's eating now. Biting. You see him, Andy? In the middle. Facing us. Got a white white mark on his back. It's a case of waiting for the right shot. Um, it's not always advisable to shoot them in the water. Obviously, if it's shallow, you've got a better opportunity, but um, otherwise you've got to wait for them to come out onto the bank. It's full of scars on his face, red scar. He's the one with the scars on the, on the right side of his mouth, and he's got a scar on the end of his nose. There he's still left of the pig, under the water. Yeah, he's eating now. No, that's a risky shot. Where's he at? Hey, you can see way. us back. Rob, watch yourself. No, I'm not in the way, don't worry. Shoot his back. Yes, good shot. No, he's dead. No, he's, but he was cruising. Yeah. yeah. But he's got a big hole in his brain. Okay, go and go. You clean, Rob. You clear? Yeah. He started twitching the, the current was starting to take him. I just ran in there and grabbed him quickly. Right, now we can go skiing. <laughs> Put it back. Yes. 
Yes, good shot. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for being patient. Yeah, I mean, it was... It's intense. It's, it's intense. It's hard to stay that patient that long and see that many heads. And Rob's seeing... You see the same one. That's the difficult part, seeing the same one you guys see. So the hardest thing is just staying patient and hopefully delivering the shot. Very nice crocodile. Uh, definitely over 13 and a half. Um, nice fat guy, but yeah, awesome hunt. We probably had 20 crocs on the bait. Congratulations. Thanks, Rob. Good shooting. Thank you. Saw a lot of crocodiles, and uh, the most challenging part of it was just identifying it, being able to get in the shot. Like Rob said, it's kind of there's a little bank here, and it's water, so they would grab a bite to eat and then kind of lay, lay their heads back down. So it was just a lot of patience. Patient Appreciate you, Rob. And, uh, your whole team of guys, you know, like, like you said, it's the last day and uh, no way to end it in, in the hunt with a beautiful crocodile. Indeed. So we uh, seen one on the flat plane here, yeah, and we're going to get downwind and uh, walking, uh, stalk it now. Go 
Messias. Shot. Good shot. Hold on, Jed. What do you think, bud? I'm fucking tired. I'm tired. <laughs> Good hunt. Pretty exciting. Pretty got lucky. So that works good. Can't complain. Uh, definitely a challenging truck to get over here. Okay, well done. Second prize. Yeah, a little bit of luck on our side. But as we came out, he was right down, 20 yards from Boniface. And he sensed something, he was moving away. As we came out to put the sticks up, he ran off and straight into the bush. And then um, you spotted the bush buck male. <laughs> and that came out and he put in one or two good shots and we got a nice bush buck. Good <laughs> second prize. What do you reckon, Jade? I reckon you shot a one-eyed bush buck. See how old he is. <laughs> but that's that, that is, that is. Very nice shot. Shh. Jeez, how you very short. Oh, oh, nice. Got him in the butt. Mm. Must have pulled it big time. Not my best shot. Hit him a little. Low, hit him a little low. Messed up his leg, but uh, luckily we were able to take him out pretty quick. So uh, not a lot of suffering. Uh, so real, real happy. Real pretty animal. Real cool looking. This boy's definitely been uh, in some battles. He's got some scars. So it's uh, really awesome. Well, we've done a lot of miles for buffalo. Probably in the top. 10 people over the last 30 years that I've walked after buffalo, so we really walked. Um, Jared really got every facet of buffalo hunting in. He saw the stalking, he got the chawari shuffle on the backsides, he did everything, um, followed them up. Um, we looked at bulls, passed up bulls, saw herds, saw soft bulls. Then we've been chasing water buck, we've seen water buck, we've seen a one horned water buck, we've seen baby water buck. Um, we missed one, but it was a long shot, 280 yards maybe. Um, and then we had seen this water buck from the boat today. Unfortunately, we came out right where the water buck was and he sort of sensed where we were. And as we had to come out onto the flat plane to see him, he was looking back, saw us and ran away. And then we saw a bushbuck female and then a bushbuck male came out. And uh, Jared put in, I think it was two good shots. And uh, yeah, we got a very nice old chubby bushbuck here. Well done, Jared. Thank you. Uh, I, I think this, uh, especially this type of wild, um, there's just so much to appreciate. Uh, you know, we, uh, I think we take for granted how difficult it is to survive in these environments and how strong and, and how intelligent some of these animals are. Uh, and uh, they only need a little bit of resource and they, and they do a lot with a little. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's definitely more challenging. Uh, just due to the nature of your, you don't have a ton of convenience along the way, but at the same time, uh, I think it's much more rewarding. Uh, I think it's much more kind of awe-inspiring um, and, and a little bit eerie, a lot of crocodiles, and that's just eerie. Yeah. Africa's got this just wild, you know, wild sense that, you know, you never know what's around the next corner. Could it be a lion? Could it be an elephant? You know. So yeah, the danger element is always, always there. You got to be, be ready at all times, and I think that's what I like so much about it. Just you never can relax. We grew up pretty poor, and as a, a growing up, always wanted to see and meet different people, but mostly see the different animals up close that you see in pictures and movies and zoos, I think do a huge disservice to animals. It's kind of heartbreaking when you see animals that are used to roaming 20 square miles of a lion and they're in three acres or an acre. I think that's extremely inhumane. 
Africa is just wild and it's beautiful. Um, the smells, the sounds from the birds, and I just fell in love with Africa. The people are great. Um, I've hunted a lot of other places in the States and Alaska, and Africa is the best. The service, the number of animals, the PHs are so knowledgeable about their game. It's gigantically impressive. <laughs> if you never came here, you, you need to come because it's, you won't be sorry. <laughs>